All right, so we're going to go over part three of unit 14. This would also be part um, part of unit 15, um, looking at uh, gametogenesis in unit 15. So you'll use this video for both places to answer questions on your lab activities. All right, so let's talk about oogenesis in the juvenile phase. So this is basically, um, we're talking about the embryo fetus sort of creature, okay? So we're going to start with oogonia, and you'll remember in the male um, reproductive system that we talked about spermatogonia, okay? Both of these things are the stem cells, okay? They are diploid, and they are going to, both of them, whether they're starting or not, are gonna go through mitosis. And with the oogonia, you're going to end up with around 700,000 oogonia stem cells sitting in the fetus, okay? Now the next step is that you are going to encase those oogonia into primordial follicles. And remember that the primordial follicles are little follicles that are lined with simple squamous epithelium. Okay, they are a holding cell. And what's important to remember is that you're gonna call these oogonia now primary oocytes because they have started meiosis one, but they have stalled in late prophase one, okay? So you start with the oogonia, okay? They go through mitosis. Those cells get encased into primordial follicles, you are going to change the name to primary oocytes because they start meiosis one, but they get stopped in late prophase one and they're just gonna hang out, okay? By the time you're done with all of this, at the time of birth, you're gonna have around two million of these primary oocytes encased in primordial follicles, okay? Now everything stops. All of this is done by birth, okay? Nothing is then gonna happen until menarche, and a reminder, a menarche is when menses begin in the tween or t teen girl, okay? So after birth, you have no oogonia left, you have only primary oocytes, and those are gonna hang out and do nothing until menarche starts. All right, let's move to the next slide. All right, now we're gonna be in the adult phase whether you're an adult or not. This is a phase when it's a reproductive age, okay? So we're talking about the ovarian cycle, which on average lasts 28 days, which means there's a range of 21 to 40 days. Most women don't fall right at 28 days. It's 21 to 40, okay? If you are following that 28-day pattern, then ovulation is going to be around day 14. But this varies because if you've got a shorter cycle or a longer cycle, you're not gonna ovulate on day 14. Okay, so going back to oogenesis, at puberty, so at menarche, you've got about 400,000 oocytes that have made it. So you remember at birth you had about 2 million, now you got about 400,000, the others disappeared, okay? You're only ever gonna use only about 500 though, so it doesn't matter that you lost over a million and a half oocytes because you only need about 500 so you have more than enough okay so about 500 oocytes will get released during the 40 years of reproductive um, time that a female has okay so starting with the cycle we are at monthly now okay each month a few follicles or oocytes are going to be activated they are activated by an increase and LH and FSH. So that tells the prim primary oocytes to mature into a primary follicle. Now, technically speaking, this starts about six months prior, but it's very difficult to describe the whole thing saying, saying that. Um, essentially, the FSH and LH are gonna rise and then that primary follicle that was pushed into primary state six months ago is then going to start maturing, okay? And it does that by pumping up its cuboidal cells 
to secrete more estrogen, okay? So that LH and FSH continue to go up, primary follicle is eventually gonna mature into a secondary follicle. The early part of secondary follicle is still a primary oocyte. And then close to the end, it's going to split and create a secondary oocyte. And this will actually be in the graphene follicle at that point in time. Now, every time you complete meiosis, whether it's meiosis one or meiosis two, you get a polar body. The polar body has DNA in it, but basically nothing else. And it resorbs, okay? Um, the secondary follicle is also where you're gonna see the first sign of the antrum, okay? Now, um, all, all here, you're still dealing with a primary oocyte, okay? Towards the end, you're gonna get an estrogen surge because you've been getting more and more granulosa cells. So late in that secondary follicle stage, you're then going to move into the graphene follicle stage. And somewhere in here is when you will complete meiosis one, and then you will have a secondary oocyte. Okay, next slide. All right, so we are now dealing with a graphene follicle. Now, as the estrogen levels get higher and higher and higher, they eventually peak, and that causes LH to be let loose from the pituitary gland. That LH stimulates the eruption of the secondary oocyte from the graphene follicle. It falls into the pelvic cavity where it is sucked up by the fimbriae into the fallopian tube. This is ovulation, okay? Now you will usually have two to four of these graphene follicles working their way towards us. The first graphene follicle to erupt is the winner. The rest typically break down and get resorbed and turned into scar tissue. And this is because the progesterone levels go up and the progesterone levels shut down the development of any other graphene follicles. Now, if you've got two graphene follicles that were close to being done at the exact same time, they might both respond to the LH and be released, in which case you would have two potential eggs and that could potentially result in fraternal twins. Okay, so now ovulation is finished, all right? The follicle cells, the follicular cells, the granulosos, granulosa cells are gonna be converted from being primarily estrogen producers to being progesterone producers, okay? Now we're gonna change the name of that follicle to a corpus luteum, okay? Now, for the ovarian cycle, we call this the follicular phase, so you, excuse me, the luteal phase. You have the follicular phase where you're developing and growing follicles, and the luteal phase where you, you are using the corpus luteum to secrete progesterone, okay? This luteal phase should be 12 to 16 days, so about 14 days on average. If it's less than 12 days, then you are less likely to have a fertilized egg implant. So having a long enough luteal phase is important, okay? Now, if fertilization does not occur, then after two weeks, the hormone levels fall. The corpus luteum will then degenerate and become scar tissue that we call the corpus albicans and you begin your period or menstruation, okay? On the other hand, if the sperm joins the secondary oocyte and you have basically fertilization, then meiosis two will complete. And for a split second, you will have an ovum, but then the sperm's DNA merges with the DNA of the egg and you go right to the conceptus. So you don't get ova hanging around the way you do sperm. They really only last for, you know, a few seconds to a minute, okay? And if the sperm never unites with the secondary oocyte, you never get an ovum. All right, next slide. All right, so on this slide, what they're doing is they're showing um, the development of the, the oogenesis, so the oocytes, okay, versus what's happening with the follicles in a drawing right here versus histologically right here. 
So if you're starting here, you got your oogonia. It's going to go through mitosis, make lots and lots of copies. Those get encased into primordial follicles. So there's actually an in-between step in here. Okay. Um, and then they hang out until adolescence. Okay. At adolescence, each month, some of the primordial follicles will go into the primary oocyte phase. Okay. And they will restart meiosis one. Okay. Now, when that happens, the primary oocyte is fattening up, releasing estrogen and towards the end of the follicular phase, enough estrogen will have built up that it will stimulate this to finish meiosis two. I get a polar body right here, which is DNA, and that gets resorbed, and then I have my secondary oocyte. The secondary oocyte continues to develop, all right, then it is ovulated, okay? So here we've got ovulation. If nothing happens, if no fertilization occurs, this dies and gets resorbed. If fertilization does occur, so see the little sperm, isn't that cute? That's going, the entry of the sperm into the cell stimulates the completion of meiosis too. Now I've got another cell, uh, polar body that's gonna basically get resorbed. I have for a split second a, um, an ovum, and then the DNA from this and from this merges, and now I have two in and I have a zygote, okay? And you will see that the way this corresponds. So here you got your oogonia, encased in the primordial follicle. Here, primary oocyte. Actually, that should kind of be down here. I don't like the way they've labeled that, so just ignore primary. In fact, we're just gonna cross that out. We're just gonna call it primordial, so that's not confusing, okay? Here we've got the primary. You can see the cuboidal cells here and here. The secondary begins to form here and here. All right, now we're getting into the graphene follicle, which is also called tertiary or vesicular follicles. Um, and you see those structures and then ovulation and the corpus luteum. Okay, last slide. All right, this picture I just like because it really shows like right here how big that secondary oocyte is in contrast to the sperm. So you can see a little bitty sperm, giant secondary oocyte. And that's important because this here has to go through mitosis as it goes through the zygote, marola, blastocyst, and then eventually embeds itself into the um, endo uh, endometrium and starts to form the placenta. So this needs to be able to go through hundreds of um, mitotic divisions um, before it gets a nutrient source. So it needs to be pretty big in order to do that, okay? All right, so that was the end of this part, and you can then, um, either continue on to part four of unit 14 or go on to unit 15.